Guys, one thing I forgot to say. I always forget to say one thing. Jesus Christ kept telling them that he must die, right? In the Old Testament, back when there were laws and rules and you, you had to keep putting an altar or keep putting a flower and a fruit, you know, you had to keep bringing these things for sacrifices to give as a good sacrifice. The reason the Lord kept saying to the disciples and wanted them to preach it is because he was the lamb that was slain on the altar for our sin. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He said, when he said in the Bible, God, I must, he, he told his father, he said, I must drink this cup. He drunk the cup of sin and death. He drunk everything that he came down here and he went through. And then they mocked him as they had him hanging on the cross. That's why you see people act this out on the holiday. Because he bled, they pull his beard out, they make fun of him. He was a lamb. God sent him down here as a sacrificial lamb. He said, I'm going to send my son. And I'm going to let him lay his life down on the line. He laid his life down and he agreed with, the, with, with God. He said, God, he said, I will do whatever you tell me to do. He was obedient to his father. And so, and he said a few times <laughs> to his disciples, he said, it's really a shame, you know, that I have to give my life to such people as this, you know, but he, he went on went on through with everything he had to go through with all these little ceremonies and festivals and everything they had. Nobody believed him. The priest over there, they didn't believe him. They had their all their little ways set up and they said, oh no, you can't come in here and change our laws and change the way we do our things. This is how we do it here. Who are you? Where did you come from? You know, and so he was the ultimate sacrifice. And nobody believed him. To this day, nobody still believes. They still don't believe until they see, oh, let me see some miracle signs and wonders, and then I'll believe you. And you know what the Lord said in the Bible? I read it back here. He said, I'm not performing no more. He said, when you see me coming in on the cloud, coming with all power in my hand, he said, then you will believe. But see, then it'll be too late. But all along, everybody is saying that this is the Messiah and this is that. And they're explaining and they're telling people to believe and put your sins under under grace and give in to your flesh. Let your flesh go. Because, you know, Jesus overcame sin. He went fast for 40 days and, and he was tempted three times and he let that to sin pass by. He had the, 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 fe the fever, the, fle the sin, but he said, hey. I'm not giving in to that. He said, devil, get back. You know what I'm saying? And he said, the same thing that I have done, you can do also. If you feel a sin come upon you or something come upon you, he said, just, just flew it off. He said, just, just, just ignore it until it goes away. Whatever. You know, if somebody come around you that you know you're not supposed to be a part of, he said, get in high tail. <laughs> you don't run, but you know, oh, I'm busy. I got something to do or whatever. You know, he said, just find a way to shake off those things that are not like him. That way you won't become a part of it. You won't get entwined with that and have to go ask for forgiveness for this and that and this and that. You know what I'm saying? Stand strong on who you are in him. And he will help you stand strong. He will gird you up. You got to read the Bible and pray. But he was the ultimate sacrifice. So whenever you gave your life to Christ to become a child of God, and you said the blood was shed for you, and then you believed it in your heart, then you are a child of God. Now, if you're doing a lot of things, a lot of bad things that you need to be forgiven for, you better go back and ask for forgiveness. That's all I can tell you. But when he said, once I died, I was the ultimate sacrifice, that was it. Once you asked me to forgive you, that was it. I forgave you. Now, whatever else happened after that, hey, who's to say? But God said, everything happens once. And then he said, when I look back at your life, after the first time you asked me for this, what happened? Did you come back after years later? Because some people it'll take many years. They come back and say, I remember I gave my heart to Christ when I was 16 or 15 or 17. God, can I come back? He said, come on. He opened you an open arm. Come on back in. So you go back in. Start going to church. Start doing your thing. You know, did you stay? 
and that you go back out there again and start doing what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And so life is a back and forth. Once you decide to go back, make it a make it a, a thing where you just stick. Even if sometimes you miss a Sunday here and there, still go back, still stick until until your life begin to change. Read your Bible, pray, you know, read other books. And that's how the cycle go. But now if you go back and then you keep leaving the church and going back and leaving the church and going back and leaving the church, who's to say he won't come back one day and you're not in the right place at the right time doing what you're supposed to be doing? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, he was a sacrificial lamb. He lived to die to cover the world's sin because the world had fallen and the world is still in a fallen state right now. And he will come back again because it's going to get worse and worse and worse. He will have to come back to save the earth again. It's going to happen soon. And nobody knows when, but it will happen again. All right, so that's that's about the sacrificial lamb. We no longer have any sacrifices. The Old Testament laws, the way they did the laws, are not happening. That's not going on. Jesus is the ultimate lamb. He was sacrificed for everybody's sin. And people should be believing if they are Christians in him. And they do have Christians in all languages. Every language has its own Christian language. Every language. But it's still one God. It's still one Jesus. Isn't that something? All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.